So I had this realization recently. I booted up my Xbox Series X slash Space Heater, looked at the games that I had on it, and could just not bring myself to play any of them. I don't know. I don't know why I'm holding this. This thing's a chonker. Anyway, nothing on my list looked appealing and I just scrolled on my phone for the rest of the night and then I went to bed. But I really wanted to have a long, hard think about this. A lot of video games just don't give us that same good feeling that they used to. Does this sound like you? It might because I remember about a month ago, I was scrolling through Reddit and I found a post that was talking about this exact dilemma. People just weren't having fun with video games anymore. So if you were wondering why modern games from this era just don't bring you the same joy that they used to, don't worry, because I thought about it. And I made some theories on why this could be the case. And I think I have some pretty strong arguments. So I think the first glaring issue, and it's probably one of the most obvious ones, is that modern games just don't release in a finished state. They have bugs, or they just don't give us the content that we were expecting at launch. Even off the top of my head, I can name a few. I definitely didn't write these down when I was making this script. Uh, Battlefield, No Man's Sky, Anthem... Halo Infinite and Cyberpunk 2077. Now, some of these did make a comeback by releasing more content down the line, namely No Man's Sky, but this is typically not the case. One thing that all these games did have in common though is that they were hyped up right before release. They were advertised to the maximum extent possible. These evil corporations just dumped barrels of money into ad campaigns. For instance, when Cyberpunk 2077 came out, they made a big stink about how you could choose three distinct starting character paths. That was pretty much your character background, and they said it really, really mattered. It turns out that was kind of a lie, wasn't it? The background choice that you made really just gave you one of three unique starting sequences, and then it just threw us all into the same game. And maybe you'd get a single different dialogue choice when you were talking to an NPC based on your background, but that was pretty much it. And then, not to mention Cyberpunk 2077 came out with bugs that would make Todd Howard blush. The bottom line is that no one expected a company of CDPR's reputation to release a game in a state like this. And it simply didn't deliver on the promises made, the promises that were advertised to us. And that goes for not only Cyberpunk 2077, but pretty much every single game I named on that list, and every new game that's coming out now. And how about the act of pre-ordering? That supposedly everyone hates, but we still all do. It kind of encourages the release of unfinished games. Think about it. When you hand a company your money without even seeing the game first, well, I mean, they already have your money. It doesn't really matter what product they give you. But all of this is just the big reason that games kind of aren't fun anymore. The lack of content and bugs at release just kind of spoil the whole mood for you. And when developers do get fixes or expected content down the line, your mood's just kind of spoiled. Just imagine, like, if you go to a restaurant and you order Surf and Turf and you prepay for this order and then they give you a dollar store steak that's well done and a cooked goldfish. And then the waiter says, oh, sorry, you expected something different? Well, we could fix your order. We could bring a porterhouse to you, but that won't be here for another month. And it might not be the way you wanted. But while lack of content may be plaguing games right now, there is one thing that you could always count on being in new games. Micro transactions. I've said it before, I love, I absolutely love microtransactions. And by saying that, I mean that I loathe them with every portion of my being. I would argue that microtransactions are probably the worst thing to ever happen in the gaming industry. For consumers, at least. For companies, it's literally an infinite money hack. The companies reap all the rewards, and it ruins the experience for the player. Just think back to the day when you never cared about cosmetics. You never had to worry about loot boxes or DLC or anything like that. But now games are literally focused and built around this concept. In order to unlock new levels or to get new cosmetics, you have to pay for it. Just look at Halo Infinite and Halo, I know that we dump on you a lot, I know we dump on 343, the whole community is against you, but this is warranted. If you want certain armors, then you have to buy the Battle Pass. Some armors aren't even in the Battle Pass, you have to pay for them through the store, for, might I remind you, absurd prices. Now this is fine if you just want to look at the cosmetic aspect of it, because that doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't affect your gameplay. But it's still like a lingering little gnat that's like poking at you, always trying to tempt you just to bring out your credit card. But what about games where you just can't even avoid the microtransactions? Destiny 2 comes to mind. And I love Destiny 2. I really do. But yeah, Bungie, I'm coming after you. 343 gets enough of it. We're done picking on them for the day. But in order for a new person to play the game, you have to buy the expansions. And if you're playing with friends that already have past expansions, you don't have access to that content, but they do. So if you wanted to play with them and get that experience, you'd have to buy all the past expansions. And then even with the new content, you have different events that you have to buy and different season passes that you have to buy. And all of these things just kind of sour a game like that for me. You never really feel like you're getting the true experience unless you spend more money on top of what you already spent. This is kind of prominent in every single game now. I mean, hell, Assassin's Creed actually made you spend money at one point because the game slowed down to such a slog that in order to level faster, you could pay money or you could just grind it out. And Ubisoft, I gotta say, that is some insane levels of corporate greed. Hats off to you. 
And I shouldn't even get into mobile games because those things are garbage. Like, they are straight trash. If you play them, I feel sorry for you. I refuse to play, download, or even look into any mobile games. Because I know they all have absurd microtransactions tied to them. Literally pay to win. Just look at Diablo Immortal. Diablo is a game that I never played, but I know it was a revered classic that the community loved. But now that game is making $1 million per day. That is disgusting. The bottom line is, a $60 game is no longer just a $60 game and a free-to-play game is anything but that. But maybe I'm being pessimistic. Maybe unfinished games and microtransactions are the norm, and now I should just accept it. Maybe not enjoying a game is actually my fault. That brings me to one of my saddest theories here. It's old age. I know you might not be able to tell by my hairline, but I am old. Relatively, relatively. But I feel like I kind of grew up in like a golden era for gaming. I mean, you had the PS1, the PS2, the original Xbox, Nintendo 64, GameCube, that was some real damn fun. There were great games on those consoles. But when I played those games, that's pretty much all I did. I was what you would call a nerd, a loser, a ver- Okay, that's enough. I'd pretty much get home from school and just immediately jump on Halo 2 or Halo 3 or whatever was out at the time and then just jump on Xbox Live with my friends and then just play until I went to bed. I had zero responsibilities and zero women. No job, no serious relationships, no bills to pay. I mean, I was just playing games all day. But now for us millennials, I mean, basically boomers at this point, right? We now kind of have responsibilities. We're at that age where things are happening in our lives. We're advancing our careers. We might be having kids, God forbid. We got bills. We got rent to pay if you can even afford it nowadays. Basically, what I'm saying is there's a lot of real-life distractions that keep you away from just playing a video game, which is fine. I mean, one could argue that it's healthy. You shouldn't just be a slug and play video games 24-7. I'm not arguing for that. But video games are just entertainment. Some people like to binge watch shows, some people like to play video games. It's a break from your everyday life. But when you have all these responsibilities of the real life, sometimes when you sit down to play a video game, you might feel like you're wasting your time. Speaking of being old, relatively, I would argue that, I hate that I'm gonna say this, I would argue that they just don't make games like they used to. And that kind of ties in with the point of microtransactions and releasing unfinished games. I'll put it this way. When I put in Mario Kart for the first time in my SNES and I booted it up, I did not once think about having to do a microtransaction. I didn't think about having to pay $5.99 to unlock Donkey Kong or something stupid like that. But I think it even goes further than microtransactions. I think back to games in like the 2010s. Was that when that was? Whenever Xbox Live was first coming out, games were much more social than they are now. And now this is going to blow a lot of you Gen Z minds out there. But just listen to what I have to say. Party chat was not really a thing back then. When you logged on, when you went on your Xbox or whatever, you didn't hop on Discord, you didn't go on the Xbox Live party chat, you were exposed to the wild. You jump into a lobby and it was just open mic night. Not for comedy or anything like that, just to hurl racial slurs and insults at other people and trash talk for the one minute that you have before the game loads up. I mean, there was no saving you. You were just exposed to it. You couldn't escape it. I mean, you could mute people, but sometimes it was too late. And this might sound bad, but that was just a small fraction of it. There were actually some really cool aspects of the whole social interaction that older games had. There was even this feature called proximity chat. I don't know if new games have this now, but back in the old days, in the old days, it was actually pretty common. So like in Halo 2, when you got closer to an enemy, they'd be able to hear you talking on the mic. It was pretty interesting. But things like that in open chat, it really drove the social aspect of it. I'd say like 80, 90% of people had their mics on when they played. So you'd talk to people, you'd make friends, it was a great time. But now some games just feel like barren wastelands. There's barely any social aspect to it, and trash talking is kind of looked down upon. I'm not saying we got soft, but trash talking was pretty fun in the COD lobbies and Halo lobbies back in the day. But finally, and I think this is one of the biggest things of the modern era, we just have distractions now. Back in the early 2000s, social media wasn't really a thing. I mean, we had MySpace, and that was kind of it. But now we have Reddit, TikTok, Facebook. I don't even know if anyone uses Facebook anymore. Instagram. Basically, what I'm saying is we could scroll for hours and hours, and we could get that sweet dopamine hit without having to do anything else. Because let's be honest, gaming is about pleasure. It's about escaping the real world. It's just about having fun. So when you could do that by scrolling your phone, you're getting entertained by like 10-second videos at a clip, and you're just scrolling and scrolling. There's kind of no need to do anything else. So at the end, guys, I just want to make this little video about why games might not be as enjoyable as they used to, and it, I just kind of want to be lighthearted, but I will say this. If you don't think any of these points apply to you, if you weren't like, oh yeah, I could see that, that's the reason that I don't enjoy games anymore, it could very well be depression. So if you think you need something to get out of that funk, like therapy, or talking to a friend, or just getting help from whatever, then go do that, seriously. In my next video, I want to do something a little more lighthearted. I wanted to talk about games that will kind of cure your depression, games that will get you out of a funk, namely... 
Deep Rock Galactic. It's a lot of fun, and the game is specifically non-toxic for new players, or green beards, as we call them over there. But we're going to get into that next week. So yeah, guys, new videos every single week, by the way. That's another thing. But guys, if you like this video, let me know. Leave a comment or something. That's honestly probably my favorite part of YouTube as a whole. I just like talking to people. I like seeing what people think about the video. And if you have any thoughts on it, just let me know. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next one.